at Fridays. It's always Friday. TGI Fridays, 3330 Veterans Boulevard in Metairie, corner of North Holland, where Sports Nolan TV originates this evening. Always good to have you with us. Always good to be at TGI Fridays. And a pleasant good evening. Ken Trahan with you. Welcome to the latest edition of Sports NOLA TV. What a shame we've got nothing to talk about in the world of sports. Are you kidding me? So much going on. It's remarkable. SEC tournament just concluded. Final Four is coming up. The Saints in their situation. Of course, high school basketball championships. Peyton Manning, we got nothing to talk about. And oh, by the way, college baseball as well. And college basketball continues where LSU and Tulane women are concerned. And as always, we break it down with our outstanding host of panelists, starting with the man without a hat today, Brian Alley Walsh of SportsNola.com. Brian, it's a good look. Thank you, Kenny. It's always a pleasure to be here with Mr. Hat and Mr. Maudy, and of course, Mr. Trahan. Wow. Now, the guy that did not get the memo on one end, he got it on the shirt end, but not on the hat end by any stretch of the imagination. What's up with this? It's contagious. Former New Orleans St. Torrance Small, although it certainly fits him better. Torrance. How are we doing? Ken, glad to be back. Hey, somebody had to take Brian's place. You understand the old guy can't remember like he used to. <laughs> we are blessed today to have another former New Orleans Saint, wide receiver, special teams ace, and a good friend, Rich Motti, joining us as well. Rich, it's good to see you again. It's great to be here again, but I, I have to make one suggestion. Yes. I wish Brian would put the hat back on. <laughs> <laughs> Well, one good turn deserves another. There's only reason why you're called a special teams ace is because... I couldn't make the first step. Yeah. So I ain't know what you do whatever it takes. Yeah, Evidently, here you go. which is why we have here an issue today. It's kind of like the old axiom, my good friend Joe Sherman, the coach at Delgado, when he played baseball at Tulane, my buddy Lenny Van Gilder, they'd always put a description in the media guide about players, and they had nothing to say about his playing ability, so they called him a coach on the field. Right. Right? You had to say something nice about somebody, so it's kind of the same way, special that, teams. That is. The good thing it was so long ago, we don't remember much of that anyway. <laughs> Neither do I. It's always good, and it's great to have you with Thanks, us. Kenny, and great to we want to thank our friends at TGI Fridays for their support. Again, Ronnie Bouvier and his crew making it very, very welcome for us. Always great to be here. And it's always Fridays at TGI Fridays, even on a Monday night. We're just getting started. When we return in just a moment, we'll address Peyton Manning and the happenings of the week in football. Plus, still to come, we'll talk about where he's going to end up, the Saints, and much more. Plus, Mark Schlesinger of UNO later in the show on basketball as Sports Nolan TV continues from TGI Fridays in Metairie. Twenty-one players getting the tag, the most ever, and well over fourteen million a year if the tag holds on Breeze and they don't get him signed prior to the start of the season. Ken Trahan, TGI Fridays in Metairie, and Brian, when you look at this Drew Breeze situation, I know you feel the same way I do that they will get a deal done before July fifteenth, correct? Yeah, I, I agree totally, Kenny. I think everybody on this day is, feels the same way. I don't think any of our feelings have changed from really. Uh, last football season, they're going to get a deal done. That said, Kenny, in the event something doesn't get done and he does play with his franchise tag through the season, I'm not so sure he'll be back next year, but that's another story. But they need to get a long-term deal done, and I think they will. And, and, and I think they'll get it done. The thing I've been saying, you know, since last week, I've been saying, I think Drew Brees had an opportunity to be a real leader on this team. If Drew Brees had to accept the contract, we'd had an opportunity to, um, to, to uh, uh, take care of Knicks or Colston to give them the tag and hopefully try to work something out uh, with them. By him not signing that, that, um, that deal, we had to put the tag on him and now look at the mess that we're in. We don't know what that deal was. You know what, you gotta, be, I, I get crazy sometimes if you don't think 
that Drew Brees has an incredible relationship with Peyton and with Loomis mm -hmm. and with Benson. I mean, it's like it's like Peyton and Indianapolis. These guys have a great relationship. They're working. I, I bet my house they're working to try to put all these pieces of this puzzle together so they can retain as many of those guys as they can. But it's a complicated issue it, it, with it, this it, ca salary it, it, cap and the things that are yeah, going on yes, right now. It, 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 it is. But 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 for what we know, from right. what we know, That's from, from, from what we know is he still is going to get paid top dollar as Tom Brady and as the same as Peyton Manning. But he was going to get the same. And he deserves same every penny yeah, yeah, of it. Yeah. Yeah. And he will help his teammates and get that's, this done. It's not, it's not, it's, that it's number not doesn't fun. mean anything. Yes. Now, laid out. It, 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 exactly. But my, my thing was, he had an opportunity to show some real leadership. My point, I think he had up to show some, some He's leadership. done nothing but show leadership since he's been here. I completely disagree with you. I'm not, again, 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 can't be serious. again, again, I'm not going to say the guy's right. not a leader. No. But we're we're gonna move, we're gonna move on and we're gonna move. We gotta move on and save him at this point. So uh, let's, let's take a look at Saints free agents. Saints free agents. Drew Brees is not the only one. This is what Torrance is alluding to. Exactly. Look at all the free agents we're talking about there now. On that list, Brian, realistically, there's maybe four or five that you absolutely want to keep, right? Correct. And again, we've ad nauseum, we have said the ones that they've identified. I will say this, Mr. Hat, say and it. I think the reason that you're say you're it. having this skewed look at things say is because it. of the hat. Say it. It's because they weren't able to get a long-term deal done with Drew, so therefore they had to use a franchise tag, exactly. and now they're going to be scurrying. Exactly. They will be scurrying. They're exactly. around eight million under the cap. It's slightly less, than, slightly more than last year's cap. So they're going to be scurrying. They're going to have to do some creative management creative of uh, uh, money here to try and get some of these guys under like like uh, Marcus Colston, Torn, uh, uh, Robert yeah, Meacham, Tracy I Porter. <laughs> Those are the kind of guys, Jolon Dunbar. So they, I will agree with you on that, but yeah. don't blame Drew Brees. I know. No, 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 think, see, see you, got, you guys taking this wrong. I, I said, I said uh, this last week. Listen to me. I, I said this last week. I said, Drew Brees, love you. Great guy. Has always been a team leader for us. That only thing he had an opportunity to show a little leadership right now through this here. That's the only thing I say. I'm not saying he's not a leader. No, but Listen maybe, maybe not. You're assuming he had that. Okay, let me tell you. Well, you can't thing. separate the two. You can't say well, he's, this he's not showing leadership, but he's a leader in the same breath. Well, <laughs> let, me, let me put it this way. Let me. They, they, but Torres can. Listen. Well, listen to this. Well, listen to this here. Payne Man and them got a five year, what, $90 million deal? Uh -huh. Drew Brees got a five million, $90 million deal. The only difference is, is how it's structured. It was just front loaded or back loaded. And that is the difference, folks. It's still a $90 million deal. But do you don't think that the that administration is talking to Colston and Knicks and all these guys and trying to put all these hey, pieces man, the together? Thing, and, 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 Yes, I think they're trying to sign everybody, but that's not. I'm not saying they're not trying it. But you it's know, not I'm Breeze's saying, decision. I'm not saying point. it's Breeze's fault. Understand, this is not saying Breeze's fault. The only thing I'm saying. Want to get that clear? He could, he could. Yes. See, you you guys think I'm saying it's Breeze? No, I'm just saying Drew Breeze had an opportunity to really step up and show us something right here. Maybe. Maybe. That's, that's all he's done here. I still don't, don't get it. Like that's all he's done here. I'm just saying to help to help this team out. To help Mickey Loomis Yeah, he hasn't helped his team out. Yes. No question about yeah, that. I'm, I'm, Can just, I'm just saying. Kenny, do we have time? Just let me ask Not you. Not really, go but go ahead very quickly. Go ahead. <laughs> go ahead. If you're in Drew Brees' situation, put yourself in his moccasins for yep. a moment. Uh huh. Would you have done the same thing he did, or would you restructure and try and get everybody in the fold? No. I would have got my $90 million just like what, what, what they put up. I would still get my, I'm still get my $90 million. And I'm hopefully going to get this office alignment to protect me because I didn't get this by myself. Colston, another guy. I didn't get this by myself. Two guys that really yeah. helped him and put him where he, where, where he is. Okay, now, let's now, move on. No Time to move you on. You guys are looking at him putting forward. Let's take a look at some key Ooh, dates in the it. NFL that are coming up. These key dates are imperative, of course, tomorrow. The league year begins. Free agency begins. We'll know everything we need to know by then about Carl Nix. And then, of course, the NFL owners meeting. Before that meeting takes place, we'll know about the penalties to the Saints, which we'll get into surrounding the bounty situation. April 26th to the 28th is the NFL draft, so these are all big days that are forthcoming. We can tell you that Sean Payton and Tom Benson have been in New York meeting with Commissioner Roger Goodell again Sunday and Monday, mm -hmm. so that's taken place, and we'll have some sort of resolution to this very, very soon, and I know it's going to be serious. The question is, how serious 
is it going to be? That still remains to be seen, and obviously that's a major concern for everyone involved. While this takes place, another New Orleans native son, Peyton Manning, moving closer to doing whatever he's going to do. Manning, of course, an 11-time Pro Bowl, a four-time NFL MVP, won a Super Bowl, and of course was the MVP of a Super Bowl as well with the Colts. And his career stats, well, they're pretty salty. As you look at the numbers, I don't know that you can do a whole lot better than that. Fastest in history to 4,000 completion and 50,000 passing yards. So obviously, Brian, this is a guy that right now, two teams we know, the Broncos and the Arizona Cardinals. We'll talk about this in our hot seat segment. But clearly, this is a guy that's going to get paid. He doesn't have to work out for anybody. Absolutely. And you know what? He had a chance to be a real leader up in Indianapolis. <laughs> if he would have taken the deal. Mm -hmm. yeah. He didn't take the deal. Yeah. Well, well, What's well, up with that? Hey, 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 What's up with that? He's a good guy. No. He's just a little crazy right now with that hat on. He's keeping the blood flowing down. Uh, it's all good, Rich. Well, you know what? Again, we, we can't lose confidence in the guys that got us to this yeah. point for the mm -hmm. last five or six years. They're trying. It's very complex. You know that it's all a numbers game. I mean, I'm excited for Peyton. Look, if Peyton's yeah. healthy. He's going to do what he's going to do. He's going to get what he's going to get, and he's going to bring great um, success to anybody he goes to. So, but with our situation, I think yeah. we're just sit back, relax. It's going to all going to work out. And the other yeah. thing is, mm -hmm. we've got some guys in there like Nick's. You know, we don't see the big picture. There may be a backup there that might be good enough well, to be able to replace him. So we don't know well, all the people. Well, let me say that. Let me say this on, on behalf of yeah. my friend Torrin Small. Yeah. <laughs> and I think what you yeah. guys said earlier is mm -hmm. accurate. We don't know all the semantics. And when you don't know all the semantics involved, it's kind of hard to sit here and pass judgment on who's been offered what, who's willing mm -hmm. to do what. We've already seen Jari Evans. You know, take a deal whereby he's allocating an extra $2 million toward the cap, which will help them maybe re-sign his buddy on the other side. Leadership. Trust me, Drew Brees is showing leadership. Drew Brees is doing everything. Uh, Don't you think he knows <laughs> that he needs Carl Nix? Don't you think he wants him? For that matter, he wants Marcus Colston. Are you kidding me? You think he's that selfish that he doesn't want the guys that have made him what he is? There's no way in hell that's true, okay? The guy has shown nothing but leadership. He's a winner, and this franchise would be absolutely dead without him on and off the field. That simple. That mm. simple. When we return in just a moment, we'll put Brian Ellie Walsh on the hot seat about where Peyton Manning is going to end up. Where is it going to be? We'll have that discussion and tell you why when we continue in just a moment with more of Sports NOLA TV from TGI Fridays at 3330 Veterans Boulevard in Mentory, corner of North Holland on WHNO. Channel 20. Our Sports Nola TV trivia question of the evening. The Final Four returns to the Superdome for the first time later this month. Who played in the first Final Four in New Orleans in 1982? Think about it. We'll have the answer a little bit later. I know you can name who played in the championship, but can you name the other two teams? Ken Trahan, Sports Nola TV from TGI Fridays in Mentory. And it's time now for our hot seat segment where Brian Alley Walsh is on the hot seat with a topic of great interest to New Orleans sports fans. And this week's hot seat topic is where should Peyton Manning play NFL football in 2012 and why? Brian, the floor is yours. Thank you, Mr. Trahan. I've given this great debate, great consideration over the last couple of minutes. There's 12 teams that have somehow expressed interest through the agent, Tom Condon, somehow the representation of, of Peyton Manning since his departure in Indianapolis about a week ago. And two front runners have emerged, as we all know by now, Denver and, and Arizona. These are two franchises that Peyton visited over the weekend, spent six hours at each place. They appear to be the front runners, but there's, I think there's a dark horse out there somewhere. There's Tennessee still is out there, Seattle, Kansas City, Miami. Come to mind, Washington apparently took, him, took itself out of the, the uh, sweepstakes with its trade for, our, uh, for the number two pick with St. Louis. Ostensibly, they're going to go probably take RG3 from Baylor. All right, that's said. Where should he go? I've said from day one of this show, I think he should go to Houston. There's a, a, a can't-lose situation. I know Matt Schaub is their guy there, but if 
if the Texans want to win, they, they've got a good window here of opportunity, and Peyton would be a great fit there. If the two teams that are in the lead supposedly are Arizona and Denver, I know that he doesn't want to go to the NFC, but if I were of the two teams, I would definitely go to Arizona. He's friends with Ken Wisenhunt. They've got a chance there. The Bidwells want to bring a champion to the desert, a championship to the desert, and I think that would be a great fit, a great place for Peyton to end his career. So I say Arizona. You did all right. I, I, I must say, you did you, you you did all right. Hey, hey, it must be the hat off here. You can breathe now. You, 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 did, you did good, the great one. The great one did answer you correctly. Definitely on uh, Arizona and Denver, I think Arizona as well. Houston, I think that is a great pick. I think that would be a, a, a great uh, um, situation for him there. Also another one that I haven't heard much of, but I always say that I, I think it would be a great pick would be the 49ers. I think the division is not as strong. Um, I think they're just missing missing that quarterback just to get them over the hump. Alex Smith played well last year, but I think Peyton Manning just gave them a different, um, a different, uh, a, a, a more explosive offense. That is, he has a great running game. He has um, a, a great tight end. Bring in Reggie Wang and probably another receiver or two. You have Michael Crabtree there. I think they can do something. Uh, uh, there at the 49ers if he had the opportunity to go there. Look, Tars, I, I agree. can't agree anymore. Peyton's going to bring another level no matter who he goes to. But look at Peyton's viewpoint. He's accomplished by anybody's standards more than anyone would have imagined. He has something in mind to go further. He wants to win another championship. Exactly. He's going to go to the best possible organization that he can go to. Eli didn't go to San Diego for other reasons, right, exactly. as a number one pick. The Mannings know the people they want to deal with. Peyton's going to go to, number one, a warmer climate. I don't mm -hmm. think he's going to go to Denver for that reason. Yeah. <laughs> I think Arizona is an excellent pick. I yeah. thought originally Washington would have been a great pick for him. Big city. He's up there. Um, not really competing with Eli, but he would have been in a good situation with uh, Shanahan up there. But it's not warm, but it would have been a good situation with, with Washington. Warm. Washington obviously has covered that with the Griffin deal. So I think yeah. Arizona is probably right. the pick and the front runner at this point. I don't think Miami's in the hunt. I don't think they'll go to the organization no. in Miami right now. So I think well, it, a good choice for me. Uh, time to render a judgment on this particular situation. As you know, I've been on the Arizona soapbox for the past two months regarding Peyton Manning. Is some of it inside knowledge? Minimal, but a little bit. But more than that, it's just common sense. You have some pieces in place. Just like with San Francisco, you have a weak division. Oh, by the way, it's the same division. Oh, by the way, you play 11 of your 16 games indoors this coming season if you go to Arizona, including, of course, all of your home games in a controlled environment, which Peyton Manning has thrived in for a long time. You have arguably the league's best wide receiver, certainly one of the top two or three, and Larry Fitzgerald. You have a good tight end in Heath. You have a guy in Ken Wisenhunt who's going to give you the keys and let you do what you did in Indianapolis. Clearly, those things matter. Denver, they made the playoffs last year. They're an intriguing football team. Pat Bolin is a good owner. John Elway runs the organization. John Fox is a very conservative coach. I find it hard to believe that Peyton Manning would get the keys to the kingdom, although it certainly seems like that might be a possibility. Two problems with that. Number one, who are your receivers? With all due respect to Tim Tebow, he didn't have much to throw to this past year. Number two, they play at altitude, and they play in Denver, where it gets real cold, where it's outdoors, and where the altitude can certainly have an impact. John Elway thrived in that situation. Peyton Manning could too, but at the same time, to me, it's always been about Arizona. If Peyton Manning determines that their front office and their ownership is solid, I don't know why he wouldn't go there. As for the others, certainly he would make a big difference in San Francisco or in Houston and put them over the top, but they both are faced with the dilemma of quarterbacks who have improved and are good enough to win with, and they're simply not willing to make that move at this particular point in time. It's time now to welcome Marvin LeBlanc with our marvelous minute. Marvin LeBlanc is an inspirational speaker and author and motivator. He always motivates us. You can go to MarvinLeBlanc.com slash TV to get more from Marvin LeBlanc. It's great to have him back with us here this evening. Marvin LeBlanc. Marvin? Let's get ready to rumble, people. I guess we've already started rumbling today. So let's start with today's topic. Today's topic is choices in leadership. Now, what are we talking about? We've talked about leadership uh, in the NFL offseason. Uh, and a little later on in the show, we're going to talk about the NC2A's basketball coming up. Right now, what we want to talk to is you, the small business leader. 
and these are some questions. So you might want to grab a notebook or, hey, even an iPad and write down these questions and either deal with these yourself personally or with your team members. Because after all, if you do have a team, hopefully everybody is pulling in the same direction. Question number one, how much time are we spending in the business? That means the tactical side, Kenny. Are we working in the business? What amount of time are we spending as a business leader working in the business? Question number two, how much time are we spending on the business? Rich, what we're talking about that is strategies basically looking down at the business from 30,000 feet and trying to anticipate what's coming ahead. And question number three, what is that question? How much time are we spending recruiting new talent? So we're talking about player evaluations, we're talking about Peyton Manning. Well, what about you? How are you evaluating new talent for your business if you expect it to continue to move forward? Now, one other question I have is, why were you not here watching this WHNO Channel 20 television special from TGIFs? Because if you were here, you would have gotten the free book, Come Hell or High Water, Life Lessons from Hurricane Katrina. Another special treat as I wrap up is that if you go to youtube.com, forward slash Marvin LeBlanc. There's over 20 short videos there, Brian, to help move your team forward. MarvinLeBlanc.com, where marvelous performance is always intentional. Back to you, Kenny. All right, Marvin, always a pleasure. Thank you. Rich Marty, a distinct pleasure to have had you with us again this evening. Thanks so much. I enjoy being here. Always great, buddy. Now go collect your bounty. Okay, all right. We didn't talk about the bounty. Okay. Oh, by the way. We didn't get to talk about the bounty. I want to talk to Brian about something. Back in just a moment to talk basketball. Coach Mark Schlesinger of UNO joins us on Sports Nolan TV. And our Sports Nolan TV trivia question of the evening, the final four, returns to the Superdome for the fifth time. That's five later this month. Who played in the first final four in New Orleans in 1982? Think about nicknames. Of course, we know North Carolina, Georgetown in that final. Then think about the Doctors of Dunk and Phi Slamma Jamma. Louisville and Houston. Dating myself here. I was there covering it. I must be old. Ken Trahan with you, Sports Noah TV. And it is a distinct pleasure to have with us as our special guest, the head basketball coach of the UNO Privateers, Coach Mark Schlesinger. Mark, it's great to have you with us. Welcome to the show. Thanks, Ken. It's good to be here. Good to be with three of the heavyweights of sports, three guys that are franchise tags. <laughs> Definitely y'all were talking about franchise tags. You three are franchise tagged in New Orleans sports, that's for sure. Oh, I, tag, well, I, like, this I like this guy. Yeah, Let's bring him down. I'm bringing the heat back. All right, as we, we talk with Mark, we'll get into UNO a little bit later, but of course the NCAA basketball 6018 field has been announced. And Mark, you're the expert here. So we're going to take a look at brackets, our countdown to the final four. and. Of course, 19 days to New Orleans. Here's the South Regional, Mark, Kentucky, the number one overall seed. You look at the 8-9 matchup there. We'll get into our upsets a little bit later on. What strikes you about the South Regional, Mark, more than anything else? Well, growing up in, in Indiana, obviously, I'm pulling for the Hoosiers and, and hoping that they can get back in. Uh, one of my former graduate assistants is at New Mexico State. Uh, but I really think UNLV is kind of a dark horse in that group. Uh, they, they, they really got a roll of good. Uh, if, if Baylor does not shoot the ball well, Baylor's going to have some trouble getting out of that bracket. And, uh, you know, Notre Dame has been a dark horse all year. Mike Bray uh, has had them going in and out all year, and a lot of that's dependent upon their health. Can't win over Syracuse, and you can't dismiss that. Stop their win streak in the process. All right, let's flip from the South Regional and take a look at the West Regional where Michigan State gets sent west. And this seems to be an annual occurrence, Mark. The region just doesn't produce enough top-ranked teams in the West. So someone gets sent out there every year. This year it's Michigan State. What about this, Bright? Yeah, I, you know, the 8-9 the matchups are always so tough. You know, Rick Majerus had his team playing great earlier in the year. And then to get Memphis, who's as athletic as any team in the country, uh, that's been tremendous. And then when you look at, you know, over the big picture, being able to go against uh, Marquette, uh, in that bracket is also a dark horse who's played good all year long and uh, had a really good run in the tournament. Now let's take a look at the East Regional as it sets up and that's where Syracuse mans the number one position. 
And Ohio State is a very formidable number two. What do you think about this region? You know, Harvard is, I think, the dark horse of that of that bracket. You know, Tommy Amaker has those guys in the tournament, I think, for the first time since 53. And, uh, I, you know, that's kind of my been my upset special of this whole tournament that I've told people is, uh, is Harvard coming out of that. Well, that's a pretty interesting pick. We'll get to ours in just a moment. And, of course, the other regional is the Midwest Regional in North Carolina is the number one seed in the Midwest. They've got Kansas, though, looming as a possible matchup in St. Louis. What about that one? Yeah, you know, the, the 314 with Belmont, uh, it, you know, I was at Northwestern State for years, and we were the last 14 to beat a three when we beat Iowa in, in 2006. So that Belmont game is going to be interesting. But when you look at two powerhouses with Kansas and North Carolina in that same bracket, it's going to be a very, very interesting bracket. And probably, I think, with those two in it, might be the strongest of them all. Yeah, I think the Midwest and the East, to me, are the toughest brackets of all. Uh, Brian Alley Walsh, as we look at some of those brackets, what about you in terms of what's the toughest in your mind? One, I knew I liked Mark because he's from my home state of Indiana, so I knew that we had something distinctly in common. Well, I'm a Hoosier fan myself, Mark, and I, I don't think I, oh. I'm pulling for him to get to the Sweet 16, and it's going to be a tough, tough road to hold to even do that. Uh, I agree with you totally, Kenny, about as far as the regionals and everything like this, and we won't get into dark horses and stuff like this, but this promises, I've seen some experts take the chalk. Listen, I think there could be a great case, Mark, you could make, that none of the number ones make it to New Orleans, okay? None of the number ones make it. Now, I don't know if that's going to happen, I wouldn't bet on that, but I wouldn't be surprised if this is a wide open shootout, and that's what's so great about the Final Four. Yeah, you, you can just look, go back and look at the uh, conference tournaments. If you look at the conference tournaments, none of the number ones won except one, Michigan State, you know? So, you know, it's a toss-up when you come to the, uh, get into the tournament. And the conference tournaments producing different winners than the number one seeds, that is not anything new. It's commonplace, so keep that in mind moving forward. I don't think it means anything where North Carolina and Syracuse and Kentucky are concerned. Let's take a look at some of our thoughts and some of our picks and does Cinderella wear the, the glass slipper? Well, Torrance, what about a uh, first round upside? What about a dark horse team from your perspective? Um, I, I, I select uh, South Florida Bulls. South Florida Bulls. I, I, I think they'll, they'll win this, this first round, this new first round that we have, and then they'll come back and they'll win in the second round. Um, they've been play, they play hard, they play good, tough ball. The, the thing about them, they haven't been able to finish games. They always give a game away. But I, I, I think they, they have it together the first two games, but they won't go no further. Than that. Brian, your sleeper to make it to the Sweet 16? I think I picked. I think I picked Cal, and I think Cal to pick uh, to beat uh, South Florida. I believe. Oh, might no, be you, picked, you picked yeah. Detroit actually. I, Detroit, I'm sorry, Detroit. I'm getting my sleepers <laughs> and everything. I picked yeah. Detroit to beat Kansas, Mark. Kansas for a lot of different reasons. Detroit Mercy is 10 and one in their last 11 games. Ray McCallum Jr. is the son of the coach. Ray McCallum, who's being considered possibly at Illinois to replace uh, Bruce Weber up there. I like the way that they're playing ball. They're coming out of that Horizon League. And remember, Butler's coming out of the last two, two times. And Bill Self and his Kansas Jayhawks team have been beaten before by a 15. I think it could happen again. All right, Mark, it's your time to set him straight. Yes, please. Well, well, I mean, please. Uh, it's coming on, coming on pressure on me right away. And I, and I, and I, and I see that and understand. But I, I mean, I talked about earlier, I think, I really believe Harvard is the Cinderella uh, yeah. uh, of this group. I think Tommy Amaker has them playing good. They've got tremendous athleticism for Ivy League school. And I really think that they're going to shock some people and make some noise going in there, trying to battle to get into the Sweet 16. And from my perspective, my sleeper to get to the Sleep 16 is North Carolina State. Coach Gottfried's done a very good job in his first year there, recognizing some of the talent that was on hand and bringing in one player that's made a difference as well. I think they've got the right kind of draw. Ironically, I like Belmont on that half of the draw, too, to possibly beat Georgetown. So when you look at that, and you could possibly see a matchup of NC State and Belmont in the round of 32, I think the Wolfpack can emerge and make a serious run. Look, they played North Carolina very well in the ACC tournament could definitely have beaten them. They're finally realizing their potential, and I think they're fixing to be able to make a move to where they are at this particular point in time. So as you look forward, we look at some of those Sweet 16 sleepers. I talked about North Carolina State, but Brian, talk about your perspective on that, if you will. Yeah, I took Cal. 
that's the one I yeah. like. Uh, I, I think they're going to have to win three games now to reach the Sweet 16, Kenny. Yeah. So, uh, but I think that they're going to. I think they play South Florida in that opening yeah. round game, yes, right? They, they go ahead and they'll play the number five in Temple. I think they'll beat the Owls. The Owls coming from a bad league this year. Then I think they're going to go on and play either the winner of Ohio, Michigan, and I think Ohio is going to beat Michigan, Mark. I really do out of that, and I think that that uh, that Cal is going to go ahead and, and move into the Sweet 16. George? Well, I chose BCU. I chose VCU to beat Wichita State. Now these guys met, uh, matched up last year uh, in February where VCU uh, edged them out by one point. Now, VCU is not the powerhouse team there they, they was last year. Young team, but I love their coach, Shaka. Shaka gets those guys playing. I think they'll come out, they'll beat Wichita in this first game, and then they're going to come back and beat your beloved Indiana team. Mm -hmm. They will come back and beat his beloved Indiana team okay. and make it to the Sweet 16, but that'll be it. Mark? <laughs> I'm going to go with the Ohio Bearcats out of the Mid-American Conference. They won 27 games this year. John Gross, the former uh, Ohio State assistant, knows Michigan well, uh, knows that league, that Big Ten league very, very well. And he's got those guys playing at a high level. And uh, to come out of that MAC tournament with 27 wins is a heck of a statement, having worked in that league before. I'm hearing some good things here. I like VCU to be able to win their game as well against Wichita State. Experience matters, and they've had a very good record this year despite not having the players they had last year. I mentioned Belmont earlier, and I like Belmont. They have a real shot to beat Georgetown, but North Carolina State, as I mentioned, is my pick to get to the Sweet 16. That would be a surprise, a lower seed getting there, and sometimes it's all about matchups. Sometimes it's all about the draw, and I think that's clearly what we're looking at in this particular instance. All right, let's take a look now at Final Four selections. And Torrance Small, your final four picks. Yes, I picked Kentucky. That's the form lead for the NBA. Calipari has been doing a great job bringing young guys in, getting them to play. And Michigan State, what can you say more about Michigan State? Uh, Coach Izzo, Coach Izzo knows how to get his guys playing. Ohio State is a, 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 another team that I love with Sheslin uh, and, and crew in Kansas. I'm a big fan of Bill Self. All right, Brian? I like, uh, of course, Kentucky. Everybody likes Kentucky. I picked uh, Missouri. I like the number two seed as well. I think Missouri's a hot club right now. Florida State, I picked this team back in December, Coach, and I'm sticking with them, and then, of course, I'm going with the chalk out of in North Carolina. All right, Mark? Uh, you know, without a doubt, Duke is always the dark horse going into this tournament, and I think, I think them losing out in the ACC tournament will only help them uh, do a better job and get ready to uh, prepare for the tournament. Louisville's a dark horse for me. I think Coach Coutinho has those guys peaking at the right time. When they shoot the ball well, they're very, very tough to play against. Ohio State with Solinger inside is just a big power team. Uh, and Thad Mata has those guys defending well. And then North Carolina, of course, with the talent that they have. Uh, I think that, you know, when they go around, it's going to be tough for people to deal with. And we came by this honestly. Brian and I have the exact same Final Four without having a discussion. Missouri, if they shoot the ball well, they can win the national championship. If they don't, they could go out in the second round. But if they shoot it well, they can go the distance. Florida State's athletic. Look, they beat North Carolina and Duke this year. They're very athletic. They defend. they got to believe they can do it. If they can, I agree with Brian. I think they get there. And then, of course, North Carolina, Kentucky. I like chalk there. They had a great game when they played each other earlier this year, and I think they'll meet each other again, frankly, in the national championship game. We'll take a timeout. High school basketball, or and some more when we return on Sports Nolan TV. Don't forget to ask Sports Nola. Send us your questions now. You'll get answers each Wednesday, and you can win great prizes, including tickets to Bracket Town at the Final Four Interactive Fun for All and All Ages. Follow us on Facebook, on Twitter as well at sportsnola.com. Best site on the web that you'll find anywhere pertaining to New Orleans, Louisiana, and regional sports, and even national stories on a regular basis as well. Sports Nola. Com. Ken Trahan, Sports Nola TV from TGI Fridays, 3330 Veterans Boulevard in Metairie. Well, the New Orleans Hornets came off of the All-Star break and had to hit the road to play some more road games. And they finally have come home, and the Hornets continue to turn over their roster. And let's take a look at what's going on with the New Orleans Hornets right now. Of course, they went to Portland, got beat by Monty Williams' former team, 86-74. Bellinelli playing pretty well in that game. but. No offense to speak of. Then on at Sacramento, a heartbreaking loss. Lose it by one after they turned it over with the lead on a pass into the backcourt. 
and got themselves beat. Marcus Thornton, no buckets, showed him that he can score. 25 points for the Kings in that one. Chris Kamen continues to play very well for the Hornets, who then went to Denver and really didn't give the kind of effort that Monty Williams wanted to see. He really chastised his team after this game. They gave up 110 points. That's not Hornet-like. Lost by 13. They signed Jeff Foot, a seven-footer, to a 10-day contract. Let Solomon Jones go in a surprise move to some. But then they rebounded and beat a Ricky Rubio-less Minnesota Timberwolves team in Minneapolis, 95-89. Rubio done for the year. Chris came in another really good game with 20 points in that game. And the Hornets home for a three-game homestand beginning tonight against lowly Charlotte. Also on the trip, the Wizards come in, and they're not any good either. So, Brian, here's an opportunity as we look at the schedule for the Hornets to make some hay mixed in there. They got that game with the Lakers on Wednesday night. Yeah, you, you're going from the have-nots to the haves in a matter of a couple of days. And, uh, you know, they're going to beat up on Charlotte, I would assume. And then the, Kobe brings the boys in on Wednesday. So that's going to be great for area basketball fans. Oh, yeah. Uh, Lake, Lakers always bring a crowd, which is good. But hopefully we can come out of this thing at least two wins out of this. Um, hopefully it should be a, uh, a good week for us, hopefully. Mark, you're busy with your team, but I know you follow the NBA and the Hornets. Yeah, no doubt. Uh, Coach Williams, if he's not coaching the year, he should be. I mean, he's done an unbelievable job this year, keeping them involved and, and keeping them in the hunt. You know, and it's just been frustrating as, as a resident of New Orleans more than being a basketball coach. Frustrating about what happened to them, but, I mean, that, they've done a phenomenal job, and for them to be close – Every single night almost is just a phenomenal job by their staff. And, you know, it should be a big week for them. It'd be a chance for them to steal three out of four, maybe all four this week, which would be a huge boost for their team and what they're doing. I know Mark pays attention to the Hornets. I know he really pays attention to high school basketball in our state. And the state championships were decided in Ruston, all classes, girls and boys, this past weekend. We covered it extensively at sportsnola.com. Let's take a look at the results from the state championships. In Ruston this past weekend, taking a look at the girls. And in 5A, of course, Lafayette over Southwood. The 4A championship to St. Thomas Moore, they're a dynasty. And congratulations to Salmon for an outstanding season. E.J. Brown's daughter is going to be really good. She already is. Loyola Prep took out Albany for the 3A championship. The John Curtis girls, part of the daily double, beyond Tank Youngblood, beat Iota 55-42. to In 1A, it was Louisiana Newcheck at Plain Dealing over Tensaw. In Class B, Lacassine over Fairview, and in Class C, Pelican, another team that had two teams in, beat Saline by four. Taking a look at the boys' championship games in 5A, Scotlandville, a juggernaut, rolled over McKinley in 4A, a bit of a surprise to us as Peabody Magnet whipped St. Augustine, who couldn't throw it in the ocean that night, but they're still a very good team. Richwood over Bozier by 12. John Curtis completing that daily double. The boys beating Riverside in their fourth matchup of the year by nine. Taking a look at the rest of the championships in 1A, Christian Life beat White Castle in a battle of Baton Rouge neighbors in Class B. It was Wally over Simsboro, 87-65. And in Class C, Pelican completed the sweep. They beat Dubach by the score, 67-35. Mark, you can't talk about individual players, but clearly there are a lot of boys that played in those games that you have interest in. You wouldn't mind seeing them head to the lakefront. No, no doubt. I, if you're parlaying off of the marvelous minute, I mean, the third rule is out, out making new recruits and sales. I mean, I'm, we're out recruiting as hard as we can get out and get. And, you know, New Orleans high school basketball is as good as it gets uh, for those people that, that, that get, can get a chance to get out and watch. They're going to see the top-notch talent, the best of the best in this state, night in and night out. And you look at the year St. Augustine had, you look at the year they had out at, at Curtis and Riverside, it's just unbelievable the, the years that people are having. You know, I think, Kenny, I speak for our panel here. Coach Mike Kreitzer at Curtis winning his first boys' state championship, John Curtis. Uh, congratulations, Mike. Malik Morgan uh, had an outstanding career. He's headed up to LSU, as, as is, I believe, two other top uh, basketball players, boy, both in boys and girls from Curtis, correct? Yeah, Darryl Youngblood going to, yes. young yeah. going to yeah. LSU yeah. as well. Yes. yes, and congratulations yes. to Barbara Farris. Yeah, absolutely. Coach Curtis yes. Girls, yes. Her job well done. Yeah, she, she, she's done great all year. I've been pulling for her all year. Been pulling for Coach K, as you said earlier. Yeah. Coach K, love him, great guy. Um, uh, used to see him a lot. We used to hang around a lot when my son went there. But uh, JT, you're doing a great job at the school. I get, you got football state championship and two basketball um, state championship. Great job. Yeah, they got a good softball <laughs> team, too, so stay yeah. tuned. You don't know what's going to happen there. And speaking of college basketball, the UNO Privateers just completed a winning season under Mark Schlesinger, and, and their future looks brighter. Their future is much more promising, and it's 
far more secure because this past week it was announced formally that the privateers would remain Division One. All of us on the panel support that wholeheartedly. Those of us that have been around UNO for years, including myself, doing games and working in a senior administrative capacity, certainly love what has been done here and congratulate uh, Dr. Peter Foss for his move. Mark, I know it's been a, a difficult road to travel and you just have to do your job and coach, you cannot control it. At the same time, I can only imagine that you're very excited about the prospect and look forward to the challenge. There's absolutely no doubt. You know, UNO has always been my dream job uh, ever since I moved to Louisiana 11 years ago. And a chance to be able to have my dream job and then to get even dreamier uh, it, it is out of this world. I mean, uh, for us to be back in Division One, which is a level that we needed to be in with the city, uh, we have a world-class city. We're, we're in a new system with the University of Louisiana system. And Dr. Foss, uh, as our leader, wants to be the premier school of our system. And I think that really uh, lends for us having Division One athletics, and we're proud to be back. And, uh, you know, I'm anxious to get back to rebuilding. Brian, one of the things that Dr. Foss talked about at the news conference was the fact that athletics clearly tied to enrollment. He pointed to LSU as an example. You have success in athletics, your enrollment increases. Plus, media awareness. He rightfully points out that UNO has basically disappeared from the public discourse and coverage in media, and understandably so in the last year and a half. Going back to Division One, that won't be the case. People will allocate their coverage back toward UNO. You know, you look at it this way, and I'm sure Coach Mark understands and appreciates it, is sometimes you need to kind of meander around. It's unfortunate that UNO has had to go through this since Katrina, but I think they found a new place back again in Division One, and, and, and as Kenny so eloquently said, we are so happy that the privateers are back there, where they belong in Division One. When you consider that, that this is one of the largest cities in the country with an outstanding Division Division One school again back in the UNO, you know we wish you guys nothing but success and yes. keep up the great work. Yeah, def definitely wish you wish you the best um, in the upcoming season and the NIT that you guys plan on going to. Working every day. <laughs> Goes without saying and. Listen, the conference affiliation will manifest itself. Clearly, it's going to be either the Southland or the Sun Belt, where UNO resided previously. And personally, I think the Southland is a great fit. First of all, they're in the Louisiana system now. Randy Moffitt is extremely familiar with that league. It's a bus league for the most part, and that's a compliment. Budgetary, clearly a fit. In terms of institutions, it's a good fit. In terms of competition, I think UNO can compete very favorably in that league. And, and in this day and age, Mark, and I know you can't advocate either one, but Budgets are a major concern, and when you can spend less money, it's probably a good thing. Yeah, no doubt. You know, obviously, budgets are going to be a major concern with that. But you know, our, our leadership and our uh, direction with Dr. Foss at the helm, uh, they have a very clear and concise direction of that we're going to be going in. You know, we're going to be very fiscally conservative, but yet we're going to be extremely competitive. And I think people will be amazed at how quick we'll be up on our feet, not just walking, we'll be running very, very quickly. We I also think we, we want to congratulate uh, Xavier and Loyola for being in postseason play, and the LSU Tigers, the only men's team that's going to the postseason, the Tigers and the NIT, and they have to go to all the way to Eugene, Oregon to take on the Ducks of Oregon. That's a Tuesday night game. It, will be televised on ESPN. Tough trip to make, long way to go, Mark. Yeah, no doubt. Dana Oldman's done a great job up in Oregon, getting them back up and running. But, you know, I, I, Coach Johnson's familiar with that league. Obviously, made that trip all those years when he was at Stanford. So uh, for them to have a good uh, good place to go, I think that's a good home for them to go play the NIT. Back to talk college baseball and more as we continue with Sports Nolan TV. In here, it's always Friday. TGI Fridays, 3330 Veterans Boulevard in Metairie. 887 7788 to call. Hey, great location, great product, inexpensive. We love it. We're here. Sports Nola TV. We love it here. Ken Trahan, as we continue on, college baseball and two teams that are playing pretty well LSU and Tulane. UNO won a game this past weekend, and they'll start to rebuild their program now, the Division I is beckoning on a full-time basis. But as we look at college baseball, it was a good weekend for LSU up until they lost to Notre Dame, and they're playing Notre Dame again tonight. The Tigers 13-3, and three. then Northwestern State. There you go, Mark Schlesinger on Wednesday. And then the Tigers start SEC play against Mississippi State in the box this weekend. Tulane's got ULM, a good team, by the way, who just beat Tennessee on Tuesday night. And then Brown will come in to play the Green Wave at Churchill Stadium this weekend. Of course, Brian, LSU beat Tulane 4-0 last weekend. I wouldn't be surprised to see Austin Nola 
moved to a weekend rotation for LSU. He's I, special. Yeah, I agree. That, you know, uh, Notre Dame snapped an eight-game uh, winning streak for LSU yesterday up the box. Those two teams come back and play again tonight. You know, they're, they're, in, a, they're in good steed right now. They're 13-3 and three going into tonight's game. So, And Tulane, Rick Jones, I know they lost that weekend series up at Wichita, Wichita State. Wichita State, two out of three, but right. that's a good opponent. Yeah, they got good one baseball. win. Yeah. Good baseball. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I think LSU, they're, they're on the right track right now. Just before they get into conference play, uh, I got Mississippi State coming up to be conference play pretty soon. Um, hopefully they can win these next two games uh, before this conference uh, play starts. Mark, Coach Petty's team made a lot of trips last year, guarantees and such, and, and maybe over their head in terms of the competition because of the kind of players they have at that level. Now he has a chance to reset his program and get higher quality kids in. Coach Petty's done a great job of building, rebuilding the base of this program. And I know he could be more ecstatic with this uh, move back to Division One and stay in Division One uh, for us to stay there. And I know he's already been out on the recruiting trail, beating the path up and securing some commitments already. And uh, they're going to they're gonna make some noise this year. They've got off to a good start. They've got two, three kind of sleeper guys coming out the bullpen that I really, really like. Uh, they've got a ton of movement on the ball. And, and it's going to be the magic we'll be back at Maestri Field very, very quickly. And, Mark, I'd be remiss not to ask you this. Realistically, to get back to the Division One level and play competitive, with the mid-majors and the better teams in the country. How many years to get there? No disrespect to the players you have now, but how many years? Well, you know, the biggest thing for me is we got to continue to play hard every single day and, and grow from that. You know, like I said, I'm not, I can't put a year number on it, but I can guarantee you we're going to be up on our feet and running a lot quicker than people think. Uh, recruiting's been very good to us already since this announcement, and uh, we're going to be making some waves pretty quick. Mark, it's been great having you with us. I do want to mention in Mark Schlesinger will be speaking at our Life Resources Bottom Line Luncheon on Wednesday at noon over at Piccadilly Cafeteria, one of our sponsors in Mentory, and sharing his testimony. We look forward to having Mark there. Mark, we'll see you then. Thanks for being with us. Thank you much. Brian, Thanks, great man. to have you with us as always. Thanks, Kenny. Always a pleasure. Coach, good luck. And Torrance, always a pleasure, and, and Bounty Gate's still overrated, right? It's still overrated. Still overrated, guy. Don't listen to the guy without the hat. Always listen to the one with the hat, and I tip it off to you. If only, nice you. I had to get the last word. If only Drew Brees was a leader. If only hey, Drew Brees could lead. Hey, That's hey, a shame, yeah. Drew, really Drew, a shame. I love you, man. There you go. <laughs> I love you, man. Hey, uh, thanks to Mark. Thanks to Brian. Thanks to Torrance. Thanks to you for watching. As always, don't forget, sportsnolan.com, best site on the web. Check it out. I know you will enjoy it. Now, this is Ken Trahan saying thanks for joining us this evening and be a good sport. God bless you one and all. We are rounding third and heading home. So long. <laughs>